some of the greatest fans in the sport of pro wrestling. The SWE3, man, I love it. We have a fantastic main event for you tonight. You are going to believe the, the heat that is on between these two guys, Brent McKenzie and Moonshine Mantell. You know, Brent McKenzie been running Ramshack all over SWE Fury. You know something to tell you? Both those guys are big guys. They're big and they're tough. There's no telling what's going to happen. Somebody can get hurt bad tonight. Right now it's time to get down to the ring for some wrestling action. We've seen a lot. Adam Vaz, Plunkay, and Nigel Rabbit. But we've also seen the athleticism of the young gun, Chandler Hopkins. Yeah, he don't want to second guess Chandler Hopkins. Is, believe me, I've seen him wrestle. He's got some great moves. The crowd is blowing the roof off of this place tonight. The old gen in Point, Texas, home to SWE Fury. Chandler, 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 Chandler. Yeah, it seems like to me, it seems like to me, Bob, it's really illegal for Nigel Rabbit and he'll carry that stick to the ring, the ringside all the time. That stick is called Winston. It has a name. We, we have to refer to it by the name now. You know, Nigel Rabbit made a point to, to let us know that stick has a name. Its name is Winston. It's an arm bar sent up now on Niles Plunkett. I see. The, the stick has a name, okay? Yeah, Winston, he calls it. Niles Plunkett always coming out to the ring with that glass of wine. Reversal. Look at that. Just some good wrestling action happening right now in the middle of the ring here, which is exactly what these fans have come to see and what people are tuning in all over the world to see. It's the thing they always talk about, they miss that old school wrestling. That's what they're getting tonight. Absolutely. Right in the middle of the ring, a pin, only good for one there. As Plunkett goes with the leg scissors now, cinching it up on the neck of Chandler Hopkins. Nigel Rabbit always lurking closely in the background. Always just a few feet away as Hopkins up and out and now with a headlock takedown. I'll tell you something, Bob. That's not an easy move. I've had it done to me before and I've done it, but it's not easy. It's, it's, a, it's a move you have to work at. Up the road's over and down. Working. The headlock is Chandler Hopkins. Our camera's getting you close to the action here. Camera's you know, all over this building. You know something, Bob, I've wrestled all over the world. And I'll tell you, honestly, and I'm not just saying this because I'm here, but the SWE is some of the best talent and some of the well-trained talent I've ever seen in wrestling. These guys have uh, reached what we like to call the pinnacle of pro wrestling. They've made it to national TV. They're here. They're fighting in front of these, these fans who love good old-fashioned professional wrestling, and that's what they're seeing right now as the sign headlock is cinched up on Chandler Hopkins. I'll tell you, they know, it's like I know and you know, they go out here and they get humiliated and they get beat in this ring. They're going to hear about it everywhere they go. That is exactly right. We are hearing from all over the United States of America, Lynn Denton, people seeing this TV show, people seeing the amazing talent. As Blanche off the ropes now. Up and over is Chandler Hopkins. Again, big. Oh, <laughs> Okay, 
decides to take a break. I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to, and that's that main event tonight, Bob. That's going to be some kind of match. Okay, outside the ring. Yeah, the main event tonight, you know, we, Britt McKenzie, I just don't know, after a few weeks ago when that, that melee that took place out here, every wrestler that was in the building was out here trying to separate <laughs> Brent McKenzie and Tim Storm to see the, the fury, for lack of a better word, that went down between those two. And then, Moonshine Brian Mantell, his former friend Brent McKenzie, he tried to get in the corner and, and keep him back to try to maintain a little bit of order. Brent McKenzie decked him too. Wait a minute. Now he's we have that wine. the wine. The wine is always. A, it, Chandler Hopkins has Clonquet's wine. He's just handing it to an audience member. And she's posing with it for the camera. And now here he is coming up to the ring. He has Clonquet's wine. What's he going to do with this? I don't know about you, I don't think I'd drink after the guy. Uh, there he goes, chug a look at the wine, just drink all of Niles Clonquet's oh, wine. Oh. oh! You know... I, I know I see wine fly out, but it might have been a tooth with it. I'm not sure. Some of our audience is wearing wine right now. Lynn Benton, I... <laughs> Irish up into the corner. Oh, huge back body drop! Whoa! Scrape the Raptors two. Only two for Niles Poinquet. That huge back body drop. You just don't mess with a man's wine. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you don't mess with that man's wine. My goodness, they're still trying to clean up on aisle three out here. Oh my goodness, big forearm there. Uh oh. Big bulldog now and Chandler Hopkins. What's it going to be? One, two, and no! And there's no quit in this Hopkins kid. I don't think uh, you could get any closer to the action than we are right now. Niles Blanquet is stomping a mud hole in the back of Chandler Hopkins. Sure did. Ran a little mini marathon on his spine. There's Nigel Rabbit, bad mouthing the lady who just got wine all over her face. <laughs> In the ring, forearm shot. Irish whip now. Duts the clothesline. Duts it again. Grabs him, throws him off. What's it going to be? Oh, look at that big one. That's Fantastic a move. Oh, oh my goodness, Lynn Benton, this crowd. And I, I, to be quite honest, I myself. Completely wrapped up in this action now as Chandler Hopkins goes up. Nigel Rabbit has a hold of Chandler Hopkins. Nigel Rabbit interfering as always. And here we go, Niles Plunkett. Just threw him off to the middle of the ring. Wait a minute, what? Look over Somebody there, that's Adam Asher. Adam Asher's here. <laughs> what is he doing here? Adam Asher. You know, for a couple of weeks now, Miles Poiquet, Adam Asher, I hope we're showing you everything that's happening right now because Niles is not looking behind him. And Chandler Hopkins is up, and there he is. One, two, three. Hey, man, I tell you, there's no quit that kid. Once again, 
with the distraction from Adam Asher. Nigel got a little taste of his own medicine there, huh? What an opening match here. SWE Fury is underway. We will be right back with more. We're back here on SWE Fury. Bob Malden along with Len Denton here. Great opening match tonight, but that main event tonight is the one I'm really looking forward to. Brent McKenzie has been tearing across SWE Fury like crazy. And I tell you what, that's why it's so interesting to be here to watch a match like that. Because nobody wants to lose, especially on nationwide TV. Well, you know, Brent McKenzie and Moonshine Mantel, former friends, but a couple of weeks ago, something that went down in the ring changed that. It was when Moonshine Mantel came out to the ring and was trying to separate Brent McKenzie from Tim Storm. And it was at that time that Brent McKenzie then laid out Moonshine Mantel with a punch. I can only guess that Oh, look! Oh. Brent McKenzie is busted out again. They're back at they it! Go. They're back at it! I thought we were done! All right, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Malden here, and I uh, want to invite on set with me right now Moonshine Ryan Mantell, who uh, a couple of weeks ago was in that big pull-apart, the big melee that happened toward the end of our taping when Brent McKenzie and Tim Storm were literally fighting it out in the ring. You came out, and your former friend, Brent McKenzie, you were in his corner. You were trying to separate him, trying to keep him out of trouble, it seemed like, and then you ended up falling victim to that vicious punch. What are your thoughts on that, Ryan Mantell? You know, you said something real key right there, former friend. Brent McKenzie, you and I, our friendship, the sons of Texas, all that we've done together, it's over. It's over. Yeah, you're right. I got there, and I got in between him and Tim Storm, and maybe I did stick my nose where it didn't belong. Maybe it wasn't any of my business, but that's what friends do. They put each other in check. When friends get out of control, we're there to put each other back in line, calm them down, talk them down from that ledge, and get things going. But Brent, you've, not only have you become a bully, you've become some more of a little sociopath. And the thing about sociopaths, they live amongst you, and you don't know they're sociopaths until it's too late and they eat you. Brent, tonight, the friendship, all bets, they're all off. Let's talk about uh, who you will be wrestling later on tonight. Yeah, let's talk about who I'll be wrestling later tonight. Ryan Mantel. Yeah, Ryan Mantel. Yes, sir. Former friend, apparently. He stuck his nose in my business, and he paid the price for it. He got punched right in the damn mouth. And you saw what happened. They couldn't keep me off of Tim Storm. Ryan had to intervene, and he paid the price. And that's exactly what's going to happen tonight. Ryan's going to pay the price because I'm going to knock him the hell out. Fury doesn't even begin to describe the look in this man's eyes right now. That match, that main event is tonight here on SWE Fury. Glenn did not like the style of Jamie Holly. He reminds me of uh, some of the old carnival wrestlers back in the day. Yeah, the old uh, bare knuckle boxing right. guy, right? Bare knuckle yes. fighter. But I tell you something, he's a little he's a little oversized in this one. This guy here, he better be on his toes with this big fella here. Angel Camacho, I've been told, do not let the man's size fool you. He can move. He knows his way around the wrestling ring. Angel Camacho with a huge clothesline now on Jamie Holly. I'll tell you, he's, got, he's fast for a big fella. He is at some 400 pounds. Ooh. Right on the throat of Jamie Holly. It looks like, uh, it reminds me of some guy's name. Uh, you might have heard of him, Abdul the Butcher, Kamala, guys like that. Yeah, it does harken back to that style. But man, this guy can move. It, it doesn't seem that that size is holding him back at all. My goodness, Jamie Holly it definitely outsized in this one. Angel Camacho. Irish whip now off the ropes. Here we go. Oh, good court. Did you see that? Just threw his head right into his chest. Oh, man. 
dragging him out to the middle of the ring now. I don't like the looks of this. I don't like okay, the looks of this. If he does a splash off the top. No! All in, Denton. Not only the match might be over, his career might be over. Oh, no! Oh! Talk to this guy now. Angel Camacho. Angel, I'd like to welcome you to SWE. But now that you are here, what is on your agenda? What do you want to achieve here? What do I want to achieve? Huh? First off, I don't care about any of you. None of you mean anything. And what? What do I want to achieve? To be the best that there is here. And it isn't going to be hard. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to be joined right now by a guy who is a new face to SWE Fury, but not a new face to wrestling fans here in this part of the country. Ladies and gentlemen, Byron Wilcott is whoa, joining whoa, me right whoa, now. Whoa, whoa. Don't tell them people my real name. Don't tell them they're my real name. My name's Big Daddy Yum Yum, six foot five, 265 gallons of pure milk chocolate. I'm for the ladies, brother. Hold on. Baby. Uh-uh. Let me call you back. Now listen, I see you, see you got some questions to ask me. Let's get to it, but remember, Big Daddy Yum Yum. Okay, let's get to the questions now. Andy Dalton, this guy is not a new face to you. You know him very well. You're going to be facing him here shortly. Know. Talk to me about Andy Dalton. You see, I know Andy Dalton for a long time. I've known him since he was first getting into this business. When I was first getting into this business, Andy Dalton's got some of the best cardio you ever seen. But you want to see Andy Dalton sweat? Put him in the ring with me. Because he's, I'm first, he's going to be last. I'm up, he's going to be down. And tonight, SWE, you find out just how good, just how chocolatey, just how delicious Big Daddy Yum Yum really is. All right, that match is coming up. Byron, I mean, Big Daddy Yum Yum is, is in Yum-Yum. action next. Put hands on you. I, you want to catch these paws? Big, big Daddy you Yum Yum. You want to catch these paws? I've got it. Tell them my okay. name again. Big Daddy Yum Yum. yum. It's, it seems like the crowd might be a little mixed between Dirty and the Oh, he's drinking his own sweat. Gross. I don't know how it's going to make him wrestle any better. I, I don't know. It may be some kind of regimen or something. I don't know. But he's in the ring right now against a guy who's a newcomer to SWE Fury, but not a newcomer to this area. This guy well known all across the Southwest, Mr. Big Daddy Yum Yum himself, Byron Wilcott. Now, he says he's going to put his booty in his face. Huh. Big Daddy Yum Yum, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Big Daddy Yum Yum. <laughs> you hear that chant? It's not real hard to get our fans into it, is it? <laughs> yes. Here we go. Lock it up now. My bar on Byron Wilcott. Big Daddy Yum Yum. I got corrected and remanded for that earlier. He's Big Daddy Yum Yum, ladies and gentlemen. Puts the arm of Andy Dalton. He's a good-looking guy, and he's got the body, he's got all, everything it takes. And you better never underestimate Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton, the dirty one, the second-generation wrestler. Came along through training around the same time Big Daddy Yum Yum did. Both chose different paths through this profession. Referee James Beard checking with Andy Dalton now. Steps over, but Dalton takes a break in the corner. See, in a case like this, you never know what Dalton's up to. He's always thinking. Always planning ahead is dirty Andy Dalton. Oh, big chop across the chest. Forearm now. Across 
the chest. Another forearm now. Irish whip now. Guts the clothesline off the middle rope. Big splash. Oh, thought he was going to go for that pin. Knee to the face of Andy Dalton. Corner now. Big elbow. Oh, Big Daddy Yum Yum to the corner, but right behind him was Andy Dalton. You know, you notice here, SWE promotion, SWE Fury has a rule if you use a closed fist, you disqualify. You know, that's a one of a kind. He used to use it way back in the old school days. Yep. And I'm proud it's here. You know, it's none of these guys, they're aware of that rule. That's exactly right. Over the top rope, back into the ring now. Off the ropes goes Andy Dalton. Another whip off the ropes. What's going to happen here? He keeps, what's he doing to him? Just trying to wear him down. Oh, big power slam. With no pin. There he goes. One, two, and no. I thought that was it right there. I know that moment's hesitation could have been the three count for Big Daddy Yum Yum, Byron Wilcott. Going up now, he's on the second rope. Getting his balance. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Andy Dalton. over there and need to get off those ropes, Andy Dalton. You know, when you think you got Andy Dalton down, he has no quit left in him at all. He just keeps coming, he keeps coming. That is true. Drops the knee on the chin of Byron Wilcott. Big Daddy Yum Yum. Another knee. One, two, and no. Big thank you to all the folks watching us across the country tonight. SWE Fury Nationwide. As Andy Dalton drinks Big Daddy Yum Yum across the ropes now. Yeah, he has no problem. I've had people call me. I forgot I even knew. Said they see me on TV. Well, that's great. You're famous, Lyndon. Again. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll do better the second time around, huh? <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. I, I do know it is an honor to work with you. It's an honor to call these matches with you to tell the fans what's going on here at SWE Fury. Well, Bob, believe me, brother, it's an honor being sitting here with you, man. Thank you so much. We have an attempt at a suplex now. What has he got? His, do he have his teeth on him? Pretty good back and forth between these two as Andy Dalton goes for a pin. It's good for only one. Referee James Beard's hand didn't even come down the second time. I tell you, that big daddy yum yum fella, he's not a small guy. No, he's not. One of the taller competitors in SWE Fury. Andy Dalton off the rope, jumps on that middle rope now. The dirty one, Andy Dalton. In charge solidly right now. And this great match off the rope. Oh, he misses. That move would definitely slow you down right there, Bob. That one's going to leave a mark right there. <laughs> I guess so. When I talk about Andy Dalton, has got all that fight in him. This Daddy Yum Yum guy, he's got a lot of fight himself. And he's gearing up in the corner for something. Here he comes. Oh, Andy Dalton cowering in the corner. Oh, there he goes. The booty right in the face. Crowd like that. Oh. Andy Dalton behind. Looks like he might have missed there on that as he goes off. Short arm. Good Lord. What a close Did line. you see that? <laughs> Nearly decapitating Andy Dalton. Big Daddy Yum Yum now. Oh. One, two, three. That's called in the face. <laughs> Something. 
happened. <laughs> We'll be back with more great wrestling action right here. SWE Fury continues with a great new segment called The Grappler's Garage coming up next. Put your hands together for the legend, The Grappler! Oh, Lynn Denton, boy, can you believe it? The Grappler is here. The Grappler's... Lynn, where are you? Okay, I watched this guy on TV growing up, and here he is in the ring right now. The Grappler's Garage. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I don't have a chair to sit in. I'm supposed to sit down with someone, but we're not sitting today. We're standing right here at the time of Okay? Now, they're calling this the Grappler's Garage. We're going to diagnose the problems, and we're going to solve them in here, too. There's one guy that I know they can solve and have solved many, many problems. A Hall of Fame wrestler, one of the biggest names in pro wrestling, in some of the toughest matches that I've ever had in pro wrestling. Welcome out here right now, the Director of Wrestling Operations, <laughs> The Hammer, Greg Valentine. You know, you're the director of wrestling operations, and if anybody can straighten somebody out, believe me, I've wrestled you, I still got scars and marks to prove it. You can do it. <laughs> well, okay. We love you, Hammer! Uh, thank you. Yeah! Well, you know something, uh, I, I hate saying old schools, and I'm saying it right now, but I, I'm not gonna say that anymore. What we want with SWE Fury is to bring back real wrestling. Get down on the mat, ground pound, grab holds, uh, throw over the top rope is a, a DQ right away. Using the fist is disqualification. I guess you can still chop, though. <laughs> I hope so. Over the SWE is going to be a, well, it's already great, but it's going to get greater and greater and greater. You know something? I'll tell you what. In SWE, if it ain't broke, we don't fix it. But if it's broke, you're going to get fixed real good. Yeah. Hey, thank you, buddy. More wrestling action here. SWE Fury continues with the big deal. Corey O'Neill in the ring taking on Nate Jolly. Lynn Denton, you missed it. Where were you? The grappler was here a minute ago. I heard about that guy, man. I can't believe I missed him, man. But I tell you what, I heard he said a lot of good things out here, you know, with that new show he's got. Oh, yeah, the grappler's garage. I'm sad you missed that. I don't know what you were doing. Restroom break, whatever you're doing, tying your shoe. But anyway, you missed the grappler's garage, and he had as a special guest. Director of Wrestling Operations, Mr. Greg the Hammer Valentine was here. Size-wise, Nate Jolly, no match for Corey O'Neill. Big splash in the corner now. Irish Webb out of the corner. No, not again. Oh. Now, you know, Corey O'Neill looks like a great athlete, but the thing is, man, he's going to have to be ready for this guy. Nate Jolly out of the way. Corey O'Neill has him up. Look at that. Slams him down. One, two. Nope, nope. That was just one. Yeah, I think Nate Jolly kind of underestimated things. What do you think? It looks like it. Nolly Stewart, the referee. 
Trying to get action back in the ring. Oh, back into the pole now. That's steel post that holds the ring together in the corner. Corner post there. Corey O'Neill slamming into that. Nearly taking out our cameraman again. Big back elbow into the corner does Nate Jolly again. And it's Nate Jolly kid. Looks like he's been in England to train. Good grief. Look at that. Big missile drop kick. One. Yep, only one. You say it looks like he's been in England training. Well, Tell me about the style. What is it? Well, he's throwing those forearms like they taught over in England. It's a little different from the American style. And he had a little bit of oomph to it, but... Um, I'm not sure if his background for as England, but he could have trained with somebody over here with the same style. But he's a, he's a good-looking athlete, should go a long way, but you can't underestimate guys like this cat right here, the big man. Nate Jolly now picking apart Corey O'Neill as he has him backed into the corner, very close to our camera there. And, oh, look at that. <laughs> See, uh, I saw Nate Jolly do that to Chandler Hawkins at one time. I thought he lost the two. It probably was the same situation there. One, two, and no. Only a count of two. Yeah, that's one thing I could never understand about uh, the rules. No closed fist. That's a disqualification, but you can kick me in the face as hard as you want to with your boot. <laughs> well, I, I don't make the rules. I just talk about them, Lynn Denton. I, I really don't either. understand it either. Big elbow I, drop. <laughs> yeah, one, two. I see your point there, though. Uh, I, I don't really, it don't really bother me as much as it did as when I was wrestling, bro. I understand. I, I can see why just keeping up with all those rules and the, the regulations and reasoning behind said rules would be a problem. Referee Nolly Stewart checking now as Corey O'Neill elbows his way out of this one. Ducking a clothesline. There you go. He missed that first one, but see, caught the second one for sure. You see, it's, it's like this right here. If you had a football game, this is what I love about the old, stu old school style. If you had a football game, just think of it. And no referees. Yep. They just run up and down the field. The best team will win. The best athletes. They, but you got rules sometimes even underdog wins. Same thing in wrestling. You got to have rules. Otherwise, the biggest guy just take a chair and just beat the other guy down until it's over. That is true. This big, way there's competition. Big forearms from Corey O'Neill catches Nate Jolly now. He's got him up. Fireman's carry. Elbows. Oh, look at that big forearm from Nate Jolly there. Another one. Got him down. One, two, and three. Stand at all what uh, Mr. Mantel's issue is. He should have stuck his nose in Brent McKenzie, a tremendous competitor, a fine competitor, a very dangerous competitor, and I think Moonshine Mantel is just a little upset at the fact that Brent McKenzie has an opportunity that's well deserved to take that title away from Tim Storm when Moonshine Mantel himself couldn't do it just months ago. 
You definitely have a point there. You don't pick on people, call them big bullies. That's un- What if the man is sensitive about his weight and now you've just bullied him? Moonshine Mantel, that's a real bully. Look at him. In the ring, Moonshine Mantel, Brent McKenzie in that collar and elbow tie up as they back it into the ropes now. I mean, you say the strength is equal, but it does look as if uh, Brent McKenzie is doing a majority of the driving. Uh, it kind of seems like Moonshine Mantel is kind of uh, leveraging his way into an advantage every time he tries to, tries to, mind you, step forward. Look at that. He even had to break off because he couldn't withstand the pure power of Brent McKenzie. One has to wonder, I mean, how much more disappointment can Brent McKenzie take? I mean, we're talking about his big his big finish, if you will, that big punch. That's that's usually what he uses to finish off an opponent, and he's unable to use that now without immediately dis- being disqualified. And that's exactly what I'm talking about when I say that they're being bullies. Everyone's bullying poor Brent McKenzie. They're using their power to leverage Brent McKenzie into a bad spot because everyone's afraid that he's going to walk away with that goal. What are your thoughts on this, Lyndon? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If anybody's bullying... Bullying Brent McKenzie, and he feels bad, and he's, uh, you know, he, he get, feels like he's bullied when he thinks you're talking about his weight, okay? And he should get in the gym and do something about it. Okay? Well, he's wrecking Moonshine Mantel's eyes down the ropes right now. The other thing is this right here. Throwing the punch, everybody out here knows, not just Brent McKenzie, everybody in the back, all the wrestlers know that's the rule, okay? So, yeah, but that's only been a rule because because James Beard got punched. Oh, no. You have to protect the elderly these days. <laughs> well, I guess that Brent McKenzie going for that last chop. Another huge chop for Moonshine Mantel Ooh. in the corner now. Watch it there. Another chop. Moonshine Mantel having no trouble finding the gut of Brent McKenzie to stop it. Well, I will tell you this. I may have been critiquing the power versus power, but there is nothing I can say that will take away the ability of Moonshine Mantel in the middle of that square struggle. He is a very, very accomplished wrestler, a tremendous competitor. He's just, I mean, he's just not super tanks. No, he's not. Super Tex. And Super Tex flies. Did you see that? <laughs> hey, he flew. There was liftoff. I will give you that. Going for a pin now. One, two. Mantel powers out at the last moment. Guys, <laughs> and there's no punching, but kicking to the head's okay. See, this is why I feel that these rules are stacked against Brent McKenzie. I believe I heard something like that from my co-commentator a moment ago. Isn't that right, Grappler? Yeah, you know, I don't understand that part either. I agree with you on that, Nigel. But I don't agree on this right here. What? If Big Tex can only win one way is with a punch. I mean, a real dominant wrestler, a real pro wrestler, a heavyweight can beat you more in one way. It's not that he can't. It's that you take a man's weapon away from him, something that's a part of his arsenal, and you do that out of pure spite. You do that because somebody, somebody got punched that nobody wants to get punched because, oh, no, there's going to be extra questions at the old folks' home when Mr. Beard shows up with the bruises. Nigel, he's an official. Yes, and... Uh, an official I've got seen punched. officials. I've seen officials get punched. I mean, we've seen officials get super kicked. We've seen officials get thrown, and we don't see people just calling those things off and, and saying, "No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do this." No, 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 no. We did this purely to spite Brent McKenzie, and I find it's unfair. I, I don't. I, I just can't agree with you on that, Nigel Rabbit. I, I, you know, an official is an official. These guys have. Jobs to do. And that's that's my point. An official is an official, but when other officials get injured, nobody does anything. Nobody says, oh, you can't squash an official in the corner by accident because that's against the rules. No, it's purely, oh, you can't punch anybody. It was already against the rules to punch an official. And yet, what? Oh, Brent McKenzie punches an official? Well, now nobody can get punched in the head. And why would you do that? Because you're taking it out on Brent McKenzie because you're a bully and a villain. Well, I can say that the 
the bad blood that started just a couple of weeks ago when everybody spilled out of the locker room. Yeah, oh, if he goes down, if he goes oh, oh, he went down, but I don't think it was the way Moonshine Mantel wanted him to. <laughs> Going for that sunset flip, Brent McKenzie refused to topple. Instead, sitting out right on the chest of Moonshine Mantel. <laughs> Can he even breathe after that? Well, he, he probably can't. <laughs> I tell you what, I guarantee you one, th one thing. After that move, Moonshine, I wish he had a shot of Moonshine. He brought it to the ring with him, didn't he? Maybe he ought to, maybe he ought to grab a hit of that. Ooh. Speaking of hits, the pugilism, the pure power and viciousness behind Brent McKenzie's blows. <laughs> Huge clubbing forearms now to the small of the back of, oh, oh what is he going for? Is that a pile driver? Oh. What is he doing? Oh. No, 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 no. All Moonshine Mantel doing everything he can to battle away and why? Because just like everyone in the office, everyone's afraid of Super Tech's Brett McKenzie and I don't blame him one bit. Well, you know something? You're probably right. Everybody is afraid of that man. Look at him, who wouldn't be? But you know, anybody can be beat at any given time, any night. Absolutely, so long as their name isn't Brent McKenzie. <laughs> Look at this, the confidence, the confidence. Moonshine Mantel was so ecstatic earlier about all of the little things that he was doing. And Look, he is completely, completely in control. Or, uh, in the control, I'm, <laughs> mind you, of Supertex Brent McKenzie. <laughs> One, two, and very, very close to three. I thought that was a, a three count for sure. And so did Mr. McKenzie. That might not have been the most wise move, though, to get up after that, because that only means more punishment from Brent McKenzie. See, that was exactly, you, you have to think about the future. You know, being able to, I don't know, get up in the morning. Uh, now stand up straight. Seems like those things might come and be a concern. Well, uh, rapidly becoming a concern because look at what's coming down oh, on no. you. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh. Look at it! Look at the here. smirk! The smirk on the this face! Oh. oh! No! Nobody home! Oh, oh. oh Mr. McKenzie! goodness I, I think the whole building rattled when Brent McKenzie hit the ring just then Moonshine Mantel out of the way here he comes into the corner now forearm shots McKenzie back with one two Ooh. three <laughs> Ooh. oh big boot Ooh. and a chop He turned Brett McKenzie inside out. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh no, no, oh. over the top rope. It's gonna be a disqualification. Is that one of the new rules? That's one of those new rules, right? Yep. Qualification win over Brent McKenzie. Oh. Whoa, big boot. I, I don't know that this is wise. I don't know that this is wise. I mean, Brent McKenzie just lost, and I know he doesn't want to. Oh, oh that, that, that oh. was. Oh, right in the wedding tackle. <laughs> so it's bits and pieces. Does it? Or in bits and pieces. Oh. Yeah, that's. And see, this is why you don't want to anger. Oh. This There's, is why you don't want to anger Brent McKenzie. This is exactly what I was worried about. The match is over, but... Well, it's not going to stop Brent McKenzie. Nope, it should have ended there. It did not, and Brent McKenzie... Ooh. Wait a minute, look! 
Here comes Jim Storm. Now, what's he doing Jim coming Storm over is here? He's got no business being out here. Tim Storm is See? out. We have not seen the last of this. Brent McKenzie, Tim Storm, Moonshine Mantel, Corlin Denton, Nigel Rabbit. I'm Bob Malden. You That's don't our... speak for me. I speak for me. And I'm Nigel Rabbit. This is Bob Maldon. That's the grappler, Len Denton. And we are live at SWE Fury. And that's it. We'll see you next week here on SWE Fury. Who told you to talk?